We're talking to Mia Anstein, adventurer, outdoors woman, and all around great person on the mountainside right now. This special gun talk hunt is brought to you by Remington Ammunition, Brownells, serious about firearms since 1939, Tetra Hearing, Smith & Wesson, Benelli, dominate the moments, Silencer Central, silence delivered, and Hodgden, the gunpowder people. Hey guys, welcome into Gun Talk Hunt. I am your host, KJ, and to my left, or your right as you're listening on the viewing dial, um, we've got Mia Anstein. Now, Mia, you are, I'm gonna just, first off, let's say what we're doing out here in the backcountry of Colorado. Um, we're hunting. We're hunting. You're hunting elk, I'm hunting bear. Right. And, and You too, bear. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wanna hunt, I, I wanna hunt bear, but man, it was tough. It was it was a tough hunt. Um, this is probably the toughest hunt I've I've experienced. It's it's the second toughest hunt I've ever done, and the first one was Idaho backcountry, and it's just as steep as this. Yeah. So, give us a little bit of your background, real quick, because I know we've had you on the show before, <laughs> but let's give the folks another listen. Yeah, I was gonna say which which background do you want? <laughs> I'm a writer, and I write about hunting, fishing, and outdoors to encourage people to get outside and go experience the outdoors. Um, I also advocate for conservation, for Second Amendment rights, and I, vol I am a huge volunteer for all kinds of organizations. Well, that's one of the things that, that we, we kind of talked about through the whole trip. I was amazed to hear how much you were involved with. You're involved in the legislation part of it, not only on the hunting side, but the firearms and the 2A side, uh, which, I mean, that's huge for, and I, I think a lot of people don't understand that the gun rights are also hunting rights. <laughs> right, a lot of hunters don't realize, you know, it's like, okay, if the ARs are gone, I can still hunt. But what they don't realize is the action types and stuff like that that might fall under some type of firearms legislation. And once that gun's gone, the next one is, is the next right gun, in line. the next gun, the next gun. And it's not just hunting, I mean, there's also fishing stuff that they don't want you to do fly fishing, catch and release that might yeah. be the fish, which it can. So there's a lot of aspects that a lot of people don't realize. They just think that their thing they love to do is protected and yeah. it's not necessarily. And you, uh, I mean, okay, let's start out on this hunt. So when I first contacted you, I was like, Hey, I'm putting in for Colorado. What should I do? And I actually drew. Yeah. And so I was like, Mia, do you want to go hunting? <laughs> <laughs> and so you thankfully loaned me <laughs> a horse. <laughs> Thank goodness you loaned me a horse. Um, and your husband came out with us. Hank came mm -hmm. out with us. Who, my gosh, the, like him and I are right, right in sync with each other. We're like so much alike. I love it. Um, but I contacted you and I was like, okay, what do I need to do to prepare? So what we're going to do on this <laughs> podcast, and I kind of prepped you uh, a few days before, on what I did right and what I not necessarily did wrong, but yes, what I did wrong or what I could do better to improve the backcountry hunting experience. So I'm going to, and if it's two, it's three, it's whatever, but I want you to critique how the, and we'll talk about how the hunt went, but I want you to say, like, give us your thoughts on how I did. Okay, and when you had asked me what you could do better and stuff like that, really not much comes to mind honestly because you did outstanding um i had told you get in shape because yes. the terrain's rough and you have to be in shape and you're at a higher elevation so that alone your body works harder when you're at a higher elevation right. your heart is beating stronger you're stressing for oxygen and all that and so when thinking of something that you could have done better which i don't think was bad for you is you can come earlier to help your body acclimate we yeah. have when when we were doing full blown outfitting, we had two friends from West Virginia that would come, and they would come a week before their hunt. Oh, and they wouldn't ride the horses; they would hike. We would pack their camp in, and but they would come a week before, and they would start hiking up trails just because. Okay. Trying to get used to the elevation and the air. Right. And so then, by the time their hunt came around, they were ready to just be. They're up ready and down. to go, and they were amazing. But I mean, not everybody can do that. You had right. work. We had, you know 
conventions that were supposed to happen oh, yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> we had stuff to do also, but we were actually glad you came because it gave us the opportunity to take a break and actually get out and hunt. Right. Because we've been working so hard. So oh, yeah. And you guys moved a vacation into a house. And, <laughs> it's a vacation for me too. But um, on the lines of like being prepared and like physically, um, the first day you and I went out and... Um, and really kind of in search for more of like, can we bump something or bear? Like mm -hmm. we were really kind of hunting for bear that first day. And we went and tell, you've got to tell them about <laughs> our experience with like distance relation, because mm -hmm. it seemed like we were hiking forever. And that first day, my lungs were taxed. Yeah. And then by the end of the day, my legs were taxed. They were yeah. done. They were yeah. smoked. But tell them a little bit about that first day well i mean it was 95 degrees i think that day so it was yep. super super hot we came to camp we unloaded the horses and got settled and then kind of just lazied around because yeah. it was too hot to be out doing anything and the elk aren't moving when it's that hot and bears they they snooze too they have right. so much fur um but then after <clears throat> when it started to get late enough we decided to head out and just do a little stroll to kind of get the lay of the land. Yeah. And I always tell people up here, we have a lot of beetle kill and downfall in the forest and climbing logs is very difficult. And that was probably the most difficult thing was yeah. getting up and down the hills, but also going over. And I often go under logs. <laughs> yeah, well, cause you're sure I, th that's, <clears throat> that's understandable. But you say hills. I know. <laughs> Th 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 these ain't hill. <laughs> these are straight up mountains. Um, and from a guy who's at sea level, um, I think one of the things that I could have done better was instead of spending more time, like getting the cardio up is important, mm -hmm. but I think I would have spent more time on a stair mill or, or something like that yeah. um, for further distances or um, even to increase that cardio level maybe just up the uh, speed of it because I wasn't anticipating this much downfall. And I mean, yeah. the stuff that we're sitting on, the stuff that's right behind us, um, you know, these logs this are- This is kind of minor right here. <laughs> yeah, these logs are, you know, two to three feet above, you know, the ground. And so you're having to step over them and you'll come into a field of them. And I think that's one of the things that I could have done better that I noticed. Yeah. And thinking of that, I people will tell me, I mean, in Louisiana, there's not hills. No. <laughs> Definitely not mountains. <laughs> <laughs> but you can always, for anybody listening, if you want to get in shape for hunting in Idaho or mm -hmm. Colorado, mountainous terrain, hills. <laughs> yeah, hills. She calls them hills. <laughs> <laughs> but you can load your backpack. And you can run bleachers mm -hmm. and you can sidestep down bleachers, which will help because that's something that even if you're on like your elliptical or, you know, a Stairmaster or something, yeah. you don't have that side to side because that's something when you're hiking, the terrain is uneven. There's logs, there's sticks. But I notice a lot of people, the side to side, you get really side, yes. sore on your ribs. Yeah. But so if you sidestep up and down bleachers, that helps with that balance of it does. your backpack. It really that, does. That top heavy weight. And and I think loading your pack, and I, and I think, you know, especially because we came across a couple of guys who it looked like they went, I don't know, 12 miles a day or something like that. And they're, they looked in just horrible shape. Like they looked worn out, exhausted. But again, we caught them at the end of the day. <laughs> yeah, it was the end of the day, almost dark. And they also, I think, listening to what they said, they had camp in their backpacks. They, yeah. they were carrying everything with them. And that's something that Hank told you before we came. You know, you kept asking, do I need to bring this? I'm like, no, right. do you need to bring that? No. Yeah, I was so like. <laughs> if you're hunting with horses, like we can load everything on the horses. You can leave everything at base camp. Right. And then in your day pack, just carry survival things in case you get stuck out all night. And that's one thing, that's another thing that I could have done better at because um, I refined my pack each day. Yeah. You know, I was like, okay, I don't use all this. Like, I know I don't use this. And I know we are, you know, less than two miles from camp. So <laughs> distance, <th> distance wise, <laughs> distance we had a so we would go it's it's actually really funny is me and i when we were hiking that first day we took out our onyx and we were like you know it has that really cool feature the the, you uh, can see the line di distance. The distance from camp <laughs> yeah direct line like that's direct line so i don't want everybody to think like that we didn't we but we only walked as the crow flies 
we looked down and we were like, man, we've been hiking. I don't know how, what. It had been an hour and a half. Hour and a half or so, maybe? yeah. 860 yards. <laughs> and KJ says, we make shots further than this. Yeah, we make, you, you, we shoot further distances than this. And that was so, it was honestly a little disheartening because I know how much effort we put into that. And like how much ground I thought we covered yeah. and to only really kind of cover 860 yards is, is a little bit deceiving. And I think that's for a guy like me, um, judging distances out here was really hard mm -hmm. because I'm used to flat. I'm used to stuff that I can see. And with the terrain changes and you guys are, Hank was, it was excellent at, and you were excellent at judging distances, but man, for me, that was one of the more difficult things, I thought. Yeah, well, and one of the things where you get used to it when you're in it, obviously, but you have the, the light and the dark and the shadows and then the elevation right. and the rise. And so all of that makes it more difficult to judge the oh, distance. It was so, it was, it was tough. <clears throat> um, the other thing, and I, I'm, I'm not trying to feed you because I know you're really, if you guys don't <laughs> know, if you guys haven't like tuned into Mia, you, you've got to go look at her channel. Um, and you're on Instagram, Facebook, you're, you're all over the place. Um, but you're too nice. Um, I'm I too nice. <laughs> you are. Until you're, I'm not. <laughs> until you're not. Until Hank starts going downhill and you're like, he's tired. He needs to go this way. <laughs> or she falls in a creek. But that's a whole nother story. Um, you're still nice I then. Still nice. You were still nice. <laughs> That's crazy. You have um, to be able to laugh at yourself. That's absolutely. one thing when you're in the woods, you can't be too serious. I mean, we're seriously like looking for yes. a bull. Yeah. We're seriously trying to find the elk or a bear, whatever. Yeah. Um, but you also, you can get too focused or too disheartened that it's yeah. not happening. Cause basically with it being so hot, mm -hmm. the elk are in the cool, dark places and you can feel the temperature change when you get to those places. Right. But also, they can hear you coming through this yeah. way before we even get close to them. See, you led me into what I think I could have done better. Um, and there's <laughs> the things that I noticed that I, that Hank and you did that I didn't do. Um, and that's like the stealth, the, cause I'm used to like prairie grass and stuff like that, where you still have to be quiet, but it's okay. not as bad. You weave <laughs> in and out of, of terrain, but I think what I didn't do as good is my footfalls. And so like when you guys would step over logs, you would step over them. I would step onto them and then down. I, so it varies though. It does. It does vary. But, but what I'm trying to get to is that being as stealthy as possible. And it was hard because it, it's been dry out. It was 95 to or 90 to 95 degrees each day. Um, and so all the, you know, leaves that fell last year dried out mm -hmm. sticks everywhere. Um, but I think that's one thing that, that made it a little bit more difficult. And I mean, as you can kind of see behind us, um, we're surrounded kind of by aspens and, and undergrowth, new growth. Yeah. And it was really tough to kind of like be quiet. Yeah, it is tough, but Another thing, you can't be too hard on yourself if you make noise because the elk do make noise. Right. And if you're too quiet, they think it's a predator coming because bears are pretty darn quiet the yeah. way they walk. And so there is a, it depends on what the bulls are doing, right. what they're doing. Because sometimes you can lean over to take a rest on a log and the log breaks <laughs> off crack <laughs> and a bull will come running to see what was that. You know? Right. And if someone in my territory. Unfortunately, <laughs> right now, the bulls are not redding. They're not making a peep. We heard that was one, crazy. one small answer to a call. And that was, I mean, I don't know. Obviously, my distance judging is off, but I mean, it was a ways off. It like was. maybe two drainages over or so. Um, the other thing, along the lines of being quiet, that you guys did better than, and, and I get hyper-focused. You get hyper-focused on, I got to be quiet. I got to be quiet. I got to be quiet. And you start looking down. Mm -hmm. I you and and, and, and I told you, you the and first you told day. Me, first day, <clears throat> hey, you need to keep your eyes up and to look for game and stuff like that. And so what I started to do throughout the day, and throughout the hunt, was I tried to make a, an intent to say, okay, I'm going to focus on my next like ten feet, mm -hmm. map out my tr map out my path, and then look up yeah. and then just walk. It's kind of, have you ever ridden dirt bikes? 
No. So if you're We're riding, not crazy. if you're riding <laughs> dirt bikes, or even if you're driving your truck fast, yeah. If you're looking at what's right in front of you, you've already passed that. Yeah. Like it's, you're already there. So you need to be looking at that, but then looking ahead to see where you're going to go, which as you know, when you yeah. get, when Hank got tired and when the day I got tired, I'm looking down cause it's hard to lift right. your legs over logs. And then you get yourself boxed in into a, a hole, just a sea of downfall yeah. because you weren't paying attention and looking for where to go. Then. And that's, oh, that's so <laughs> frustrating. That's so frustrating. Um, I'm going to pause right here. Um, we've got some great sponsors for the show, but um, take a listen. You guys are going to love them. They support this show. We, we appreciate their support, but let's take a real quick break. Audiologists at Tetra have developed Tetra Range Alpha Shields, and I'm using these right now. I used them on this hunt. Um, they're a new premium hearing protection product for the range that reduces gun blast to safe decibel levels while allowing you to talk back and forth hear the natural environment around you, and enjoy every trigger pull safely. Visit tetrahearing.com to learn more and use code GUNTALK, all capitalization, at checkout for 15% off. Did you know Silencer Central would deliver a suppressor right to your door? I didn't know that either. I was kind of dumb to the whole thing, but they have figured out a way to get it delivered directly to your door. Silencer Central makes every purchase from online paperwork to help with setting up your trust all easily. It's a process that's smarter, easier, and ensures you get your suppressor you need in a timely manner without all the hassle. Learn more about Silencer Central's easy buying process at silencercentral.com. And since 1939, hunters have relied on Remington ammunition and their core-locked bullets. Like it's, it's a standard across the board through the hunting community. And, but now there's a new core locked tipped that offers even better accuracy and long range per performance. Um, this is the newest, deadliest mushroom in the woods. And you know what, if you need to learn more about core lock tip, they're available in a wide range of offerings, but you can find it all at Remington.com. Are you ready to hit the range or the field, but lacking a little bit of ammunition, just like we just talked about? Well, Brownells has what you need to feed that rifle of yours, or if you're adventuresome, that pistol, like a 10 millimeter. They've got that. They've got everything. They've got 308, 243, 6.5 Grindle, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 PRC. They've got it all. They've got it all. It's, it's actually amazing. They've even got 17 HMR for all you crazy folks out there. But you can fill your tag and put more game in your bag at Brownells. Get your ammo at brownells.com backslash ammunition. Okay, now we're back uh, talking with Mia Ann Stein and our backcountry hunt. Um, and things that I did wrong through the hunt. Um, yeah, and, I don't think you did anything wrong. <laughs> no, <laughs> there's not a right there, or wrong. <laughs> there's not a right or wrong. Um, but let's kind of talk about like the season that the bulls are in right now and, and the, the kind of the harsh like conditions that we actually dealt with. I mean, mm -hmm. we talked about the downfalls and the, the terrain being rough. Nothing was talking, nothing was moving. Right. But we saw tons of tracks. Oh my gosh. Rebs, oh. small rebs, not a lot of rebs yet. But, but they were there mm -hmm. and, and we walked down these game trails and, and, you know, the terrain that we tried to find, there were these game trails that were, you know, two to three feet wide and they were smooth. I mean, they were, there was tracks everywhere. Um, and there was droppings everywhere. What did you think of the terrain where those trails were? I couldn't believe it. How do they make it over all that stuff? <laughs> Or the straight up and down. And yeah. Like, <laughs> like they it's, went straight up. It's their up. cloven hooves. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that's what is amazing is, is the terrain that they actually live in and elk and, and bear. And, and it's it, there's so much new growth around here. And there's so many uh, downfalls that it made it made life difficult for us. But that's the kind of stuff that they love. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and it's just it just baffles me. It really does. Um but I'm trying to think of, uh, okay, let's, let's move towards a positive note because this hunt was an amazing hunt. I mean, to get to the time to spend with friends, um, and to see just stuff that not many people get to see. I mean, right. the views out here are outstanding. If you guys are ever thinking about, you know, doing a backcountry hunt or anything like that, man, I mean, 
go look at your channel because you provide so much insight on it and I gained so much knowledge from that. But let's talk about some of the good things. Um, fitness, I felt pretty good. You're really fit. Um, you really are. But that's a lifestyle for me. Like yeah. I try to say, but, but gear for me and, and stuff that I brought, I really enjoyed. Um, but I felt like I protected my gear really well. And I guess kind of by that is, you know, Hank told me he was, we were talking on the phone one day and he said, Hey, you know, cause at one point I was going to be flying and he goes, do you have a good bow case? Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I do, um, and I, I think I'm running an Everest 40 or something like that, but, but for driving, that was great. Uh, I would recommend, you know, if you're flying, have a nice hard case. Yeah. Um, but when I say protecting gear, it's not only about the case, it's about traversing terrain. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're side hilling, I felt like I did a really good job of protecting my bow. Yes. So I would keep my bow in my forward hand because I wanted to lean back when I'm going downhill. Right. And you don't want to fall into the hill with your bow. Right. Which I didn't, I, it was great. I didn't have to tell you that. Like, you know, because you yeah. hunted enough where yeah. you're aware of how to well, protect and, your bow. And you were, okay, like you're far better at this than I am because... I mean, like, seriously, you're a machine because I was amazed because you were carrying a Henry. <laughs> like, and so Henry you're a bear lover hunting. action 30 or 30. Yeah. <laughs> it weighs like 10 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe like, it's 25. I don't know. <laughs> it might be. I bet it felt like that at the end of the day. But talk a little bit about like your firearm selection on bear because that was, that was the most interesting because when I got to your house, you were like, hey, check this out. This is what I'm hunting with. And it was a Henry. And I was like, oh, it's a 4570? You're like, no, it's a 30 30. And I was like, that's even cooler. I mean, so <laughs> talk a little bit about that and why no. you're, that was your selection. Because that's a heavy gun. I get to choose. I mean, when we're hunting here, it's like I have several different firearms and I can choose whichever one I want. But if you, if you follow my channel, if you follow my, my social media, we're ranchers, we have cattle. I grew up with my godfather, was a cattle rancher. And my dad, he hunted for our food for right. the family. And he hunted with a 30-30. It was not a lever action. <laughs> but I love wheel guns. I love lever guns. Actually, I love all guns. Yeah, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah you're going. I'm going. Okay. that's. <laughs> and I love my bow too, but I haven't had time this summer to really practice with my bow. Yeah. And I think that it's really important if you're going to be archery hunting to practice shooting uphill, shooting downhill, yeah. run and shoot and hold at full draw for extended lengths of time. And I hadn't been doing that. And so... I was like, okay, I have to bring a rifle, a rifle. or a muzzle loader. I was going to yeah. bring the CVA muzzle loader. Oh, the Paramount? And the sight fell off. Oh. And it, when I was just going to shoot it, it had already been sighted in, but I was like, let me go shoot it. Yeah, and just a verification. <laughs> Hank's like, I usually sight everything in because I shoot really well. Yeah. And I go to sight it in, and he's like, holy bleep, 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 you were eight <laughs> foot high. And I'm You're sitting, like, no. I'm sitting there, and I was like, is he joking with me or like what the heck yeah. you know because is he exaggerating well the, i didn't know the back peep sight had fallen oh off gosh. so i wasn't even i wasn't even lining up i was lining up with the base of the gun right. but so that i was debating between the lever action and the muzzle loader and that decided it oh for yeah me. That, <laughs> that was pretty instant like nope not bringing that <laughs> uh, but no the gear i thought i thought you know whoa one thing that I did wrong the first day, hydration. Oh, yeah. And that's something we all, I mean, you saw yesterday, Hank, hydration was a thing for Hank yep. yesterday. He bonked because and he's he didn't here. have he, he lives here. He does mm -hmm. this. And he is just as in shape as I am. I mean, he's far more accustomed to marching up these mountains than I am. And I couldn't believe it because, like, he's invincible. Like, I look at him and I'm like, man, that guy can travel yeah. some ground. But he was but, so focused on trying to force a play because we knew the elk were there. Yeah. And he's trying to make it happen. And it's our last chance, you know. Yeah. And I don't think he was thinking about the hydration. And it, yeah. you don't realize that you're not hydrated until, until it's, too, it's late. too late. So you... Anytime you get to stop and take a break, take a yeah. drink. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, and that's one thing that I learned after the first day, I'd kind of, you know, you know, we'd walk a ways, walk a ways, walk a ways, walk a ways. And then I would take a sip and then walk a ways, you know, and by the end I was left with half a jug of water still. 
And I was like, oh my gosh. Like, and I, and I kind of bonked too, is I couldn't drag my feet over those logs and, mm -hmm. and my breathing was heavier. Um, and so the next day I carried my water bladder with me. Um, I drank some liquid IV uh, before the day started, you know, so right and before. supplements like that are mm -hmm. super important because just water isn't gonna get you there. Yeah, you we'll definitely... talk a little bit about that. I mean, because that's an important note and, and what, do you, what yeah. do you guys use? Um, and because I was using the liquid IVs because that's all I brought. We always bring the liquid IVs and then we use Wilderness Athletes Hydrate okay. and either one and mainly it's flavor or what they have at this or what's right. available when you're trying to order online or whatever. And so we kind of stockpile all right. of that stuff because <laughs> when they're out and you don't have it. It's I mean, on a if, constant if, order. If they're out and we come up here, it's like we don't have that. Yeah. It really is hard to keep going with the energy you need to yeah. chase the elk. Yeah. So, so in my, so my, by the end of the hunt, I have, I've learned a ton. Um, hydration was probably one of the more important ones for me to remember to take back home because I'm, I'm really bad at back home. It's like, oh, well, I'll be back in, you know, four or five hours, um, or as an all day sit, I don't pack, I pack a water bottle or something like that. And, and for maintaining focus, uh, maintaining your hydration levels and your energy, that's key. And, mm -hmm. and I think, and I had that some of the wilderness athlete, the second or second or third day, um, it was really good. Um, and they have like an energy and focus like mix, mm -hmm. and then they have a hydration mix and you guys. I like that energy and focus after, I mean, it depends on how your body's running because really you can have like a cold or you can be run down, whatever. But yeah. after, usually for me, after a couple of days, you start to get worn down from oh, going yeah. up and down. And so then in the morning, I'll just have some energy and focus just to get you going. Get you going, yeah. And kind of liven you up. But other people, I mean, everybody's different. So. Yeah. Oh, that is true. That is 100% true. Everybody's different. But I felt, you know, when I was walking, I would use the water bladder. And so it was just kind of hooked outside my uh, pack. Mm -hmm. And I was able to just sip on it throughout the day, just as a reminder, just, oh, yeah, I'm thirsty. And then when I sit down, it would be the Nalgene bottle or yeah. water bottle. And it's nice to have that because when you can't get your backpack off or you don't have time, you can get a drink, right. especially if if you're calling. I mean, that one day when we went and sat a water hole all day yeah. and we're coming out and I was only calling to try to get Hank to answer so we could right. find the horses. <laughs> and I couldn't even blow my call because I was so dehydrated. And, yeah. I, and I had my water yeah. with me the whole day. Yeah. But it was just... You just run out of. You just you, you just, <laughs> your thought processes are well. I'm sitting, the and that's is, a, yeah. We're gonna be going out, so I don't need to drink. Right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was that was one of the more interesting things that I found um, that I learned a lot was was the hydration and and how important it was and I knew it was gonna be important, um, but having you know water filtration devices. Yeah, and, filtration. I was gonna tell you that's that's something where. Hank and I right now, since we had just moved, and for your listeners, yeah. we just moved, and so I was digging. We haven't been hunting yet, so it's like trying to dig out. Where's my Where's my backpack? Right. Where's my call? Where's this? And <laughs> if for both Hank and I digging all our stuff out because he's going to pick up a right. new bowl, and um, both of our bladders are not in our packs because in the winter, when you're mountain lion hunting and stuff, your bladder oh. will freeze. Yeah, and so we don't have neither of our bladders are in our packs. So we did have our filtration bottles, but I always have those on the side where they're right. easy to get. I have one backpack that someone sent me to review, and it wraps around and buckles and covers where the waters are. Okay, yeah. And I don't use that pack because I need to. If, if my bladder runs out, I need to be able to get to yeah. that filtration easy. bottle easy. And so I always have those where. I can just pull it out, drink, put it back yeah. in. <laughs> yeah, easily accessible. Hey, I'm gonna jump in real quick. We've got a word from these great sponsors. Have a listen. Are you looking for a new hunting rifle for the field? Well, I've used it. I love it. I've sighted in, it looks great. The Benelli Loophole Bolt Action Rifle is developed for the harshest climates. It has everything we as hunters demand for a fine hunting rifle. It'd be a great hunting rifle for new shooters too. Um, if you are getting in the game and looking for a new bolt action that has a sleek look and it is lightweight, the Benelli Lupo is definitely for you. Sub MOA accuracy and advanced ergonomics make it a comfortable chassis style rifle for the field. Find out more at BenelliUSA.com. Springfield Armory's model 2020 waypoint bolt action rifle 
are precise directly out of the factory. Um, I actually used this rifle on an antelope in 2020, and it was a phenomenal lightweight hunting rifle, perfect for those Western big game hunters. Um, but it comes with a 0.75 MOS accuracy, MOA accuracy guarantee. Find out more at springfield-armory.com. And the newest trigger from Timney Triggers is a top customer request, a dedicated CZ model 457 rimfire trigger. The CZ457 trigger is adjustable for pull weight and over travel machine using state of the art technology and features Timney's new sear engagement adjustment lock design for user friendly experience. Find the CZ457 trigger at timneytriggers.com and lockdown. Lockdown has gone more high-tech than ever with their Logic line of Wi-Fi-enabled security products. The Puck 2, the Logic Smart Plug, the Logic Secure Camera, and the Logic Vault Door. Yeah, a vault door that you could actually have delivered to your house, installed. It's actually pretty easy to install, but it monitors everything. Secure everything from your gun safe to a box or even your home with Lockdown's Logic Line. Visit Lockdown.com and use code GUNTALK10 for 10% off site-wide. Another thing um, that I think a lot of people don't realize is like using your equipment all together. Um, so when I was telling you like, okay, this is what I did to get in shape. Like I hiked with my backpack mm -hmm. and I, you know, you know, drew back with my shoot backpack with and my it. bow, shoot and your bino harness. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that a lot of people don't do is they'll what they won't shoot with their bino harness mm -hmm. on or or with their hunting jacket on. They think, well, you know, it's it's all the same mechanics, yeah. but it's a different dynamic. Gloves. That's something like right now you're experiencing ninety five degree weather. Oh my gosh. And no moisture. Whereas sometimes in September, a lot of people want to archery hunt because the weather's so nice and it's so great. And I've been on hunts where we wake up in the morning and it's snowed a foot. Yeah. And so you have to kind of, okay, I mean, <laughs> I have gloves, you know, this right. year, no weather for us right yeah, now. No, <laughs> no, there is zero weather. Like no. I was like, oh yeah, I need, I need, you know, my rain jacket, my rain suit, whatever I did. No rain, yeah. no clouds. I mean, it's straight heat. And we were wishing for rain oh, or yeah. snow because it would make the walking a little more yeah. quiet. <laughs> it would be a lot more quiet. But yeah, it was it was a great hunt. You know, it was it was an adventure, and I think that's that's a big part of it is just just getting out because you never you never know. You are, it's always hearsay because before we left for for camp, we heard oh yeah, the bulls are talking. Yeah, and I, I told KJ, I was somebody was telling me all the bulls are talking, and I'm like, I, I we haven't heard them because we've been out looking when we right. were with the cows and stuff, and I'm like, I don't hear any elk yeah. anywhere yet. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. That's that's why we do it. We yeah. do it because we like to get out. We like we like the adventure and the hunt of it. Um, but no, uh, so Mia, before we sign off here, tell them where they can go follow you. Give them all the information. <laughs> well, before I tell them that, oh no, I wanted to tell. <laughs> One thing that I noticed about you and you're saying, you know, enjoying where you're out and stuff like that. That's something when I'm encouraging people, part of being out here is exploring and yeah. seeing things. And I noticed right away, like I'll show some people like, oh, look at this rub. Look at this track. Look at this yeah. mark. And you were all about like, look at the bear scratches on the yeah. aspen tree <laughs> and look at the, what's this on the ground. And you're, yeah. sh you're showing me stuff. And I thought that was really cool because a well, lot of people walk past all that and never even notice it yeah and you're, that's a you good know, point you're looking at like wild tomatoes and oh my gosh. rose hips and you're like hey look at these and what i didn't that. know what that there there was a the blue jay and i'm like stellar's jay the stellar's jay and i was like oh my gosh it was so vibrant yeah like it wasn't it was it was larger than the blue jay and i was like what well what is that yeah. and, or the yellow finch you yeah when we sat and you're like what was that yellow finch? oh he that had so cool. he had so much fun around me while we were sitting there man he was after some like I don't know, a worm or a, a grasshopper or something. Like he was excited. Um, How about the chipmunk that tried to knock us out? <laughs> oh my God. He was coming. Like, like there's no doubt. And then, and you never know. And I was going to sign off, but we've got a few stories to tell. So like I last, the us. last night. So last night we we're sitting there, everybody's sleeping. And all of a sudden, I mean, a massive, massive tree comes crashing down and like it was one of those that makes your body tense up because you're like oh this is gonna hurt you can hear the roots tearing 
before yeah. it actually went. You could just yeah. hear it rip, rip, rip. And then when it like <laughs> actually fell, I mean, I jolted up. And I mean, like I woke up and my hands were sore because I like, like it was like an intense reaction just to, and then all of a sudden the horses started going kind of nuts. They were alert. Yeah, they were blowing and snorting. So, and that's one of the nice things of horses in camp is when they, when they stomp, it's, they, you know, it's four legs and sometimes that can actually attract elk. Um, But also they can be an alert for you to know if something's out there. And we had told KJ about how they'll snort and then they might snort just smelling but if they blow yeah if they're something's blowing something's... Out there. and so kj got to experience oh, that yeah. last night because there was i don't know if it was a bear that uprooted that tree it was probably a dead tree that but maybe he was rubbing on or digging, digging or, something i have no idea but, it was, but i'm telling you it was a massive the trail. horses like I, were not happy <laughs> no they weren't but yeah this is so much excitement around camp all the time but uh tell them where they can go follow you <laughs> So my name is Mia Anstein, and I was really happy you said my name correctly. <laughs> well, how do I not? You know, you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're buddies. We, don't, <laughs> we know this. And Well, I've actually had friends that don't say it right. So anyway, oh. but my name is Mia Anstein, and I'm not creative with handles. So and on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and stuff, it's Mia Anstein, or my website is MiaAnstein.com. Yeah. See, <laughs> but that's good because that is more memorable, I think, than some catchy little name. Yeah, I'm not like, good at catchy names. <laughs> I, li- I like that. So, but you guys, as always, you know, go out, seek adventure, uh, seek the outdoors and enjoy the hunt and always keep those muzzles and firearms pointed in a safe direction and always have fun.